Do you want to know how to launch an online coaching business? Maybe you are where I once was, dreaming of how I could create more freedom in my life. Honestly, I long for the days where I could have more time freedom, financial freedom, that work from anywhere lifestyle that you hear so much about. I really long to be able to generate more impact in my life and more income in my life and no longer have the prover proverbial glass ceiling. I long for a way to be able to turn my hard-earned expertise. I've been in corporate for over 20 years, and I wanted to figure out how I could turn that expertise into a profitable and sustainable online coaching business that I could start doing the work that I really enjoyed and was passionate about. But I really didn't know how. I didn't know where to get started. I didn't feel expert enough. I didn't know if I could ever leave the safety net of my corporate salary and the benefit packages. You know, and had those questions of like, how would I ever be able to support myself and my kids? I didn't have a large social media following. In fact, I didn't even know what Facebook groups were or I'd heard about Instagram, but I didn't know what Instagram was or how to even use it. Only my teenage daughter knew how to use it at the time. If you are anywhere like that or sounds familiar, you are in the right place. My name is Shanna Martell, and I am a business mentor and marketing strategist, and I brought my business online in 2018. I help aspiring and new course creators, coaches, and content creators like you to be able to turn your hard-earned expertise into profitable and sustainable online coaching programs and courses with ease. And today, we're going to be diving into a very exciting topic. It's how to launch your coaching business in five key steps. Plus, I want you to stick around because at the end, I have a very exclusive gift for you that complements this video in detail. So if that sounds like you, go ahead and stick around because we are going to dive in right now. So let me just pull up my slides here and we'll get going. So do you have a great idea for a viable business? Maybe you've had a couple of ideas of different things that you could possibly do or that you would enjoy doing, or possibly even people, family members, friends, coworkers have told you that you are really great at a particular skill or passion that you really love. And you just kind of playing around in your mind thinking maybe this is a great idea for a business. But you have that question on how do you go from that initial inspiration to actually getting your business off the ground. Starting a business has many, many moving parts and it requires a bit of planning, but I want to be the first one here to tell you that anyone can do it if you approach it in a focused and organized manner. There are five essential steps to starting a business. And if you break the process down into these steps, it gets much easier to turn your vision into reality. The first thing you have to do is to identify your target market. Your target market is an ideal person who will buy your products. This particular person has a particular need that your products or services meet for them. So when somebody is starting a new business, they create what we call a target market profile. This is a persona of an individual that is representative of your market as a whole. So why narrow it down to just one person? If you can narrow your market down and make it as specific as possible, you can compete with the bigger and more established companies. A big company has a huge budget for marketing and a great deal of resources to put behind its efforts. And especially when you're just starting out, you may not necessarily have a lot of money to be putting behind marketing um, as far as like Facebook ads and so forth are concerned. So we really want to make sure that we're getting clear on our ideal client and our target market for your product or service. You may already have an idea of who your target market is. So you may say something. And in fact, if you do, go ahead and drop that down in the comments below. I would love to know who it is that you are considering as being a great ideal fit for your products and services. <clears throat> you might say something like, you know, small business owners, or maybe perhaps you are starting a health coaching program and you think maybe work from home moms are your target audience. But this is still too general. 
bigger companies are targeted to these same groups. So we have to be more specific so you can stand out in an already very busy market. So instead, it's a good idea to target a market persona, which would be something like small business owners who run established businesses that take in X amount of income a year based in like the American Midwest, for example. Or if you did want to target that stay-at-home mama, you could look at maybe work-at-home moms that are actually in their 20s or 30s who value that independent lifestyle. So a good, I, good profile to kind of take out a piece of paper and start brainstorming would be to kind of look at who is the, first of all, is this ideal client for you? Is he male? Is she female? Is it both? It, it, it really doesn't matter. It can be both. But the more specific that you are, the better it's going to be that you're going to be really speaking to your ideal client, the person that is the perfect fit for your products and services. And they're also going to recognize as in, it, in your marketing and your language that you're speaking to them as far as your messaging goes, that you're speaking directly to them because you are getting more specific. So take out a piece of paper and start kind of brainstorming what their age is. You know, what age range is this person in? Are they, you know, 20s to 30s? Are they more in their 40s and 50s? Are they retired age? You know, kind of really zeroing in on that is really going to help you stand out in an already crowded niche. You want to kind of pinpoint the location. Are they in the, like the example we used in a minute ago in the American Midwest? You know, do they live in the, the Midwest? What kind of lifestyle do they live? What kind of hobbies do they enjoy? What kind of things do they do? Are they married? Do they have children? Also looking at their income level. What kind of income level are they in? Is you know, this will really come to play too, as far as helping you to be able to price your programs and services. So you know that they have investable assets or they have access to resources that they would be able to invest in your products and services. Looking at what stage they are in their career, are they new in their career? You know, if they're in their 20s or in 30s, maybe they're just starting to climb the, the corporate ladder, so to speak, in their career. Or maybe they've been there, you know, a, a period of time, 20, 30 years, and they're starting to look for, you know, what's next in that next chapter or season in their life. Kind of understanding what kind of industry they are in or what area of expertise they have. So, you know, are they a working professional? Are they in the medical field? Are they in the corporate field? Are they in the tech field? You know, just really understanding maybe they're in the service industry understanding what that field and that level of expertise is, is really going to help you connect with them on an individual level. Then understanding their education level. So, you know, have that, did they graduate high school? Did they go on to college? Do they have a, any kind of degree in school? Or maybe they have a, a degree where they earned outside of the college field, like um, I'm trying to think like a I think of auto mechanic kind of comes to play or even like cosmetology or type of a service type of profession. So really understanding what that education lo level looks like for your particular ideal client. It would also be considered something very helpful to go through their psych psychological and behavioral factors, such as like how a person spends money. What do they do in their leisure time? What values are important to them? Um, roughly, you should obtain this information through your research on your market. So to try to rely on objective data is really important. Don't just go by what you assume to be important. So one of the best ways to really get market research and what I teach my students inside my program called Deserve is to get out and do some market research. So kind of understanding the market, whether you do this by doing some, you know, maybe phone interviews or in-person interviews, you know, maybe you hop on a Zoom call of something of that nature and you have a list of questions that you go through and you can do this in exchange even for, you know, maybe a free coaching session or maybe you have a free gift that you can offer your, um, the person that you're doing the market research with in exchange for their time in doing this. But this market research is really, really valuable and being help, helping. It doesn't mean that you can only help 
this particular subset of, of clients, truthfully, you can help anybody that's a good fit for your products and services, but it really helps you from a perspective of marketing and your messaging. So you really want to make sure that you don't skip this step, as well as I encourage my clients inside my programs to go through and do this on a regular basis to make sure that you are evolving with your ideal client and your niche as, as your ideal client is evolving themselves. So you can also go into Facebook groups, um, different places online, different forums online where you can gather some of this market research as well. But you really need to identify it as one single person to whom you can focus your marketing efforts. And then others, again, like I said, will buy too. It doesn't mean that they cannot in invest in your products and services. They certainly can. But you just want to make sure that you are speaking to the most perfect ideal client for your particular offer. So it's crucial not to just understand who might benefit from your coaching, but why they actually in need that help from you and specifically the help that you are providing. So kind of give you an example of how I honed in on my ideal client. So when I was looking at narrowing down the audience, when I first began my coaching career, I didn't cast a wide net. So I really targeted specifically on nine to fivers and the corporate pro professionals who were feeling burned out and unfulfilled in their career. These individuals were seeking more freedom and impact and income through creating online courses or coaching businesses based on their expertise. This specific focus then allowed me to tailor my marketing and my services to address their unique situation. So that's how specific I want you to, to get as you're going through this particular step. The second piece of that was really understanding their needs. And, you know, when I first started my coaching business, I spent quite a bit of time in market research and really speaking to various people that were kind of like me, you know, had a background in either a nine to five or had a, you know, corporate background kind of really understanding. I knew the the pain points from my perspective, but I really wanted to make sure that I was in alignment and understanding their perspective. So I did this market research and I really um, dug deep into what their specific pain points, desires, and daily experiences were. And I learned that my clients were not just seeking a way out of their nine, out of their nine to five grind, but they also really, really wanted a path to creating a meaningful and lucrative career transition. They wanted strategies for time management, effective ways to leverage their existing skills and guidance on how to build a sustainable business model. The next step was creating a persona. So this is what we call a client persona or an ideal client avatar. You know, you'll hear it referenced as many different things. But essentially, it's, you know, a taking out a sheet of paper, or you can do it on a Google Doc or sheet of paper, Google Sheet, whatever works for you. But basically, what you want to think about and what I did is to better serve my clients, I created this detailed persona. I named her, let's just say I called her Jill. And Jill was a mid-level manager around 35 years of age. She was married, she had kids, and she was skilled and successful, but was increasingly dissatisfied in the corporate world. She'd been dreaming of turning her expertise into a coaching business, but was overwhelmed by the thought of starting from scratch. This persona helped me to be able to understand and anticipate the, her needs, her fears, and her aspirations of of not only what Jill had, but clients like Jill, which then helped me to be able to create the services and content that spoke directly to Jill. So by identifying my target market as the burned out nine to fivers and corporate professionals seeking to create online courses and coaching businesses, it was able to focus all of my efforts on specific creating specific strategies and support systems that resonated deeply with them. And this led to more meaningful engagements, a loyal client base, and a reputation as a business coach who truly understood and understands and transforms the nine to five exit journey. So really, really think about that. Spend some time as you go through that. And your next steps are to create a target market profile, which indicates, let me just flip your slide here. 
to create a target market profile that includes the demographic information, the psychological factors, again, like how, how is he or she feeling? What's keeping them up at night? What are they worrying about? Like, you know, how do they feel things are going to be for them now in another five years, another 10 years? I want you to really, really get specific. And hint, hint, this person is likely you or where you were before you had your transformation. So I want you to write out this description of this person, get the data from conducting research on maybe you have uh, existing clients or customers that you've helped before in the past, somebody in your industry, your competitors, you can go in again to online forums or social media groups where people are talking about products and services like yours, kind of drill in on some of the questions that are being asked in those groups and read the responses. You can also, another um, way is to go and look at trending topics on social media, but you know, the biggest piece of advice I can give you is just ask. Come right on and ask people who follow you. Why are they following you? If you do have a social media presence online, what is it they're interested in learning from you? What inspired them to want to, to get to know more about you and about the products and services that you're offering? So once you have completed step one, then we're going to dive into step two, which is to create a unique solution. So once you know who your target market is, you can now focus on the problems that they're facing and what you can do to help them. So take something your audience members are struggling with and offer them a solution. So always kind of thinking from that problem, solution, problem, solution narrative, right? You are problem solvers and people are coming to you essentially to shortcut the way to the solution or the transformation. Only you can solve the problem in a way that you solve it. No one else can, in your industry can solve it the way you do. No one else has the, the different experiences that you've been through and that has your unique expertise in the way that you do. So I want you to focus on the strengths of your products or services and what's unique about it. This is really going to help you stand out in the marketplace. Then I want you to look at similar offerings that your competitors offer and identify what's different about yours, right? You really want to create that unique hook, that unique angle. What makes your products and services different and better? Where, what are the gaps? What do you see as gaps in competitors' offerings? Kind of looking through, reading some reviews, um, even like on YouTube or Amazon, if you go through and look at different book re reviews, you'll see, kind of look at those one and two ratings. You can see what audience members are saying about, you know, what they liked, you know, the, th the fours and the five ratings and what they didn't like, what was missing, what was a gap and to really help you craft your unique solution. So one way to make an offer offering unique is to add extras to it. So looking at this, you could offer some additional products and services and bundle them with your product. You can offer a higher quality standards like extra service, 24 hour support, a no, no um, a money back guarantee. Perhaps you can offer services like being able to help people through, through Facebook group, like a private Facebook group that maybe Monday through Friday you offer 25, 24 hour support in there to, you know, somebody posts a question, they're going to get same day or within 24 hour support responses back to those questions. Maybe you can offer support through a Voxer channel or maybe a Slack channel, channel, you know, whichever works best for you. Thinking of, you know, just how can you go above and beyond? How can you become that best testimonial that your ideal client gives because you are product and service, your customer service has been superior. You want to be able to focus on solving problems because if you get that right, you're virtually assured sales. If you help people get the transformation that your course or your offering promises to help them get, you're going to become that de best testimonial and people are going to refer you over and over and continue to work with you in additional paid products and services as you go. 
So once you release the product, keep asking for feedback from your customers, keep making improvements and give them what they want. This isn't a one and done, you know, create it, record it, set it and forget it kind of program. You are going to continue to put it out there, test it, get the feedback, see what's working and what's not working, improve it, rinse and repeat, right? And that's how you're going to become that best testimonial. And that's how you're going to become known as the go-to person for the problem that you solve in your, in your particular niche. So kind of giving you a, a tangible example of how I approached it. So when I was looking at how I could fill a gap, I recognized a gap in the market for individuals just like me. I was a seasoned professional from the corporate world looking to transition into entrepreneurship, wanted more freedom and fulfillment. So drawing on my own expertise of feeling stuck and under like underrepresented uh, represented because I, again, I didn't feel like I had the right degrees and, and all of that kind of thing. I developed a comprehensive coaching program tailored per, for professionals transitioning out of their nine to five roles into entrepreneurship. So I leveraged professional strengths. I took my two decades in corporate. And this is, this is a, I really want you to listen here because a lot of coaches that I work with, again, kind of feeling like that imposter syndrome kicking in, feeling like, you know, especially when you're, you've been in corporate or you've been in nine to five for a long time and, and you don't necessarily have the expertise or the years of experience in this new field, imposter syndrome will kick in. First of all, I want to say it's normal. Secondly, I want to say you're not alone. So just know this is normal. Know that you have expertise and you have experience that you can use for that social proof that you can use to pull out of your back pocket and say, like, you may be new in this particular business, but you're not new in what it is that you're teaching people, right? So for me, I took my two decades in corporate, where in corporate I was in, in head of, in charge of marketing and sales and training and operations and management, not just for my particular area. At times in my career, I had the whole West Coast of Florida worth of branches and, and staff that I was responsible for helping to build, grow, and scale our centers. And again, it could be everything when you know, I was a regional support manager and we were responsible for all of those things. So I was responsible for the sales. I was responsible for, for training and development. I was responsible for hiring and firing. I was responsible for operations, all of the things, um, personal development with, with, helping people with their, their career plans. So all of that expertise and experience provide me with a rich tapestry of skills and insights. I was able to then leverage this extensive experience to offer you a unique blend of corporate and entrepreneurial mentorship resonating with clients who saw their own stories reflected in my journey. Not only that, I, I am, <laughs> was then and am now, also a single mom. So my clients can also resonate with me and I do attract many clients that are in the same boat that, you know, have children or, you know, a single mom or, or maybe are looking to leave a relationship. That was my experience as well, that I was in a, an abusive and toxic relationship in the past. And so that really, really impacted my confidence levels and so forth. So kind of looking at all of these things and how that plays into you know, what experience don't, don't undervalue yourself. You are valuable and you have the expertise and experience that you need and that somebody else needs. So we want to really help those help to shine a light on those areas. So you can really attract people that are your perfect clients and then constant innovation. So embracing feedback and continually refining my offers were pivotal so for instance, recognizing the common feeling of not feeling qualified enough amongst my clients, I introduced modules focusing on mindset and qualification recognition. This innovation addressed a critical pain point, making my coaching services uniquely empathetic and practical. So 
kind of just really understanding, like for me, my unique solution was just not about another coaching program out there. There are, there are a dime a dozen, right? You could go and YouTube how to, how to create an online course. You can YouTube how to, you know, use social media effectively to be able to market your course. But I really wanted to create a program that represented the journey I had walked on myself, that bridged the gap between the corporate burnout and the entrepreneurial freedom that offered a blend of personal experience, business strategy, and emotional support tailored specifically for those transitioning from a structured corporate world to the freedom of their own business and creating that freedom lifestyle business that you desire and deserve. And this is what deeply resonated not only personally, but universally, because it was relatable as an approach that attracted clients who felt deeply understood and supported in their unique challenges. So spend some time on this, really, you know, look at how you can make this yours, how you can really dive into your personal expertise, your personal experiences, make out, you know, take out a list and just like really dig deep and think about everything that you have, you know, what are all the jobs that you've had? What are all the ways that you've helped people? What are like committees? Those are other things that, you know, through my ex ex experience, not only did I do a lot of networking, but I also was president of some of the networking groups that I was in. I was also, you know, served for my daughter's school on the PTO board and, and helped with a lot of event planning and things like that, where, you know, we did a lot of different charity work and, and those kinds of things. So all of this expertise that you have, I'm going to come on camera for just a second. All of this expertise that you have really, really is so it's golden, right? It's golden. And I want to be the first to say, you don't have to go back to college, I'm not against college. If you want to go to college, go get a degree. Like I love learning you know, we can always learn. I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner. My students, my clients, my sole clients are lifelong learners, but don't undervaluate, undervalue your worth and all of this skill and expertise that you have gone through, the experience, school of hard knocks, whatever that is, your ideal client needs you and they need you to help to be able to bridge that gap, close that gap and help them to get from where they're stuck in their pain in their problem to be able to get to that promised land quicker, right? So they don't have to go through the school of hard knocks like you did to be able to get there. They can use your shortcut, your shortcut path that you create through your signature solution to be able to help the, to get them through there. And the way that you do it and the way that you deeply get them is gonna make all of the difference in the world. It's not just gonna be another course on a shelf that never gets finished, right? Or never even gets opened. A lot of courses aren't even opened, but this is a program that you can really bring to your ideal client to help them get transformation that is truly life-changing, life-changing. So it's really, really good. So let's dive into the next step. The next step is figuring out how to set up the business basics. So, you know, we've learned how to lay the foundation of your business that you can start to build on. The next step is really to get to the nuts and bolts of starting a business. There are several things you need to do to set up your business from a, a business and finance and legal perspective. And the first thing we want to do is figure out the cost. So it doesn't have to take a great deal of money to start a small business, but there are usually some investments that you're going to have to figure out one, what you need, and then two, where the money is going to come from to be able to finance these investments when you first get started. So some of the things that you want to consider are like, you know, do you need a license of any kind of nature? Are there permits, you know, especially when you're looking at like where you're setting up your business? Are you working from home? Are you going to work from a co-op space? Are you going to have an office of that nature? You know, and if you are, what kind of things that come along with that? Are you going to need insurance? Are you going to invest in some basic marketing? Maybe you want to go ahead and get an email auto autoresponder. Maybe you want to go ahead and invest in running some paid ads. I recommend that you really get your messaging dialed in first, your ideal client and your messaging first before you start running ads because other you, you'd be burning money on ads. 
um, because they won't convert. So you want to really make sure that you get that. You want to invest and in, maybe you're going to build some lead magnet funnels. So not only would you need the email, but you need a, well, you can invest in, in Mailer Light actually has where you can build a list of your first 1,000, I believe it is, 1,000 subscribers. And they have an opt-in that you can use for your like your landing page for free for your first thousand. So you can essentially create your first no cost funnel. And inside Call the Serve, my signature coaching program, I teach you step by step how to do this, that you can build your no cost funnel um, for free, essentially, because you'll have the email autoresponder, you'll have be able to create the form that that your ideal client will opt in to, and then you can host your particular lead magnet download it into a free PDF and you can host that right from your Google Drive or Dropbox. So essentially you can start, you know, getting leads onto your list and building your list for free. Um, also you can use like go live on Facebook, um, StreamYard, there's in Zoom, I believe you can do Zoom, I think free for 40 minute sessions where you can record and upload to the, to the cloud. So those are just some kind of things that as I'm brainstorming off the top of my head that you're going to need to invest in. And then you want to go ahead and create a spreadsheet, just really map out, like brainstorm every single expense that you might need. And inside, again, called the serve, this is what I help my students do. I provide the spreadsheet and we go over the training on really how to kind of track your expenses of what potentially your startup expenses are, and then also how to project what your ongoing expenses are going to be or what you want them to be as you want to start considering putting away money or investing money into paid traffic. If, if you do want to, you either have paid traffic or you would have organic traffic. One cost, you know, a financial amount of money to invest in those ads to get leads. The other is a time investment. So either way, it, it's a cost um, associated with that. But you, you certainly don't need to invest in paid marketing at that, you know, when you're first starting up. But we will, we go into that and call to serve to really help you brainstorm every single expense that you might need. And then your projections, especially as you continue to grow and you want to maybe outsource some other marketing task, hire your first VA and start growing your team. Setting up this part of your business depends on, um, uh, setting up the legal entity. So your business needs to in, exist as a legal entity. Setting up this part of your business depends on the location where you're based. So each country and municipality has its own rules for doing this. So part of the setup is choosing the official name for your business. Um, I would say don't get too hung up on this because you can certainly change it. You're not married to it. So don't get too hung up on it. Um, truthfully, you can just start with your name and, you know, whatever following. So if it's, you know, for, for me, when I first started um, my coaching business, it was Shanna Martell Coaching and Consulting LLC. So it can be something as simple as that. And actually, it really helps you to be able to get discovered, you know, by using your name. However, I would say, like, if you do have longer term plans of being able to at some point sell your business, then you would want to kind of consider going into an entity name that that you wouldn't have rights to the name, you know, that you could sell the business name. So much like I changed over to Visionary Edge Ventures, that was with a long-term growth plan of being able to sell the business at some point when I do want to retire, but that's not for a long time. So don't worry about that. I'm not going anywhere right now. Um, so also you want to consider paying taxes. So this is a mistake. A lot of new coaches, course creators, and consultants make in business is that they don't project their income goals to include taxes or remember to pay the taxes after they have brought in the income. So you want to make sure that you look at, you know, the area that you live in and that you really are making sure that you put aside money for paying those taxes and you have a plan in place to be able to do that. So this can also look like including setting up a tax ID number. You'll need this for filing taxes in your business operations and out, outsource to a specialist if necessary. Also, you're going to need to look at taking care of your insurance. 
So you'll have insurance liabilities you'll need to take care of, such as your maybe your business premises. If you're going to have um, staff on board, you want to look at having insurance to provide for them to cover any staff that you may employ. Also, if you offer services like coaching and consulting, you may want to have insurance against any professional negligence. So unfortunately, we're in the day and age where, you know, there's a lot of different things going on where, you know, information is being hacked and programs are being stolen and copycats and all of those things. So you want to make sure that you have um, a plan in place for that in case something like that does happen. Intellectual property rights. So you want to in secure your intellectual property rights over products that you develop and any content that you create. So if you do have people that are trying to copyright or, or um, hack your, your products and services, you can take action against that. You want to have your terms and conditions. So write out your terms and conditions or terms of service and prominently display them on your website or other important materials. This should cover areas such as ordering, pricing, delivery, returns, refunds, risk, and confidentiality. So include everything that your customer needs to know before buying from you. So you make sure that you protect yourself. Also, you want to state your privacy policy. So write a statement that tells your customers how to protect and use their data. You want to include all of the data that you gather, store, or manage. This is another important legal requirement. Again, this is all stuff that we get into much more detail inside Call to Serve. So if that's something that you could use some support on, I'd be happy to help you with that as well. Regulations are getting progressively stickier and consumers are increasingly aware of privacy issues, especially with dealing with companies online. You want to get paid. So you want to figure out how you're going to get paid for your products and services, how to set up everything before you start taking payments. So again, like really having that system set up, how are you going to, you know, if you're doing calls with like consult calls or free discovery calls with your clients. You want to have that set up. You want to have a the way to be able to take payments set up and the systems to be able to onboard those clients once you do take that payment, how to get their contracts um, signed and taking care of all of that. And that's all done electronically. So you just want to know that like by meticulously setting up the basics, like your budgeting, your legal structure, you know, truthfully, this is how I have been able to enjoy a smooth operation of my business, allowing me to focus more on clients, coaching and less expected the, you know, less time on unexpected hiccups. So this, you know, again, I provide all of this in call to serve my signature coaching program to really help my clients to be able to set them up for success as much as possible as they are launching their online coaching business. So what are your next steps here? So you want to research the country and the region where you live and then make a list of all the things that you have to do to get your business officially started. So you should be able to look this up online, kind of just looking up for your local state and seeing what those requirements are and then create a spreadsheet, you know, whether you're using Google Docs or a piece of paper, you know, to take out a, a spreadsheet and and start to anticipate, go back and look over these slides that I provided you and go back and anticipate all of the expenses that you will want to set aside money for to be able to get your business set up and get it set up right from the get-go. So let's dive into step four. Your brand is the image the market has of your business. So we want to define your brand. That's step four, define your, define your brand. So your brand, it's a combination of designs, symbols, words that communicate what your business is all about. It helps your company stand apart from others in a crowded market. So when someone sees your brand, they instantly know it's you. It's more than just a logo or a motto. It's the overall image for your business. A good brand is clear. It's memorable. It's consistent on all your products and marketing materials. Most of all, it conveys what people think about you and your company. If you're offering financial services, your brand should tell people that you're trustworthy and knowledgeable. 
Some companies might choose a brand that communicates fun and excitement and that relates to lifestyle associated with their products. Kind of some of the top brands that you may be thinking of right now is especially after we've done lots of holiday shopping as Amazon, you know, kind of thinking what that logo looks like, what that brand looks like, what they stand for. This is what I want you to start thinking about in your business and what your what you want to stand for and what you want to stand against for your company. So the best way to start or to come up with a brand is start to think about the associations that you want people to make. You want to choose a handful of adjectives or short phrases that best describe your business best. So, you know, kind of thinking about what are those key words? You know, is it luxury? Is it freedom? Is it fun? Is it strength? You know, kind of thinking about what image do you want to come into the mind? You know, another one I have been looking at cars recently. And so looking at like the infinity the infinity is all about sleek and luxury and reliability. Like these are the things that you want to kind of associate with your brand. Some things that I've considered integrating and, and, and integrated in my brand and thinking about the brand values itself. So I determined that some of the things that were really important to me and my brand were number one, integrity creativity, empowerment. These are really my brand's core values. I want my clients to be able to know that I am trustworthy. I want to them to know that, you know, when they come to me, that they can feel empowered to be able to take action in their business. These are values that are informed in everything from my logo design to my communication style. Also, when you think about like the visual identity, I invested in a professional logo and website design that reflected my brand's aesthetics and values. This consistency made my brand more recognizable. So when you look across, let me just see if I can show you this really quickly. When you look across like the branding here, and this is one of, this is one of the free gifts that you can grab at the end of this video that I have for you is how to launch a coaching business, five key steps. So this is a guide that I have for you to be able to grab. But when you kind of look at these elements and branding, looking at the color, my key colors are blue, white, and gold. Those represent integrity. They re represent luxury. They represent trust. Also kind of like if you look over to my website, you're going to see these same branding, colors, fonts, imagery, all carried out through throughout all of my different, my website, my traffic. Like if you look at my YouTube channel, the same branding, the same consistency, the same font. If you look at my Facebook group marketing, you're going to see the same colors, the same images carry through same way with, with Instagram. So you want to make sure that when you are doing that for yourself, that you start to look at what that consistent visual identity is. And then also you want to have your personal storytelling. So I often share my journey of starting and growing my business as part of my brand's narrative. So this personal touch helps me helps potential clients relate to me and understand the value I provide. So it's also known for its vibrant and creative approach. That's kind of where visionary edge comes from. It's like pushing the boundaries, taking it to the edge of what you think is possible for you and for your business. And your personal journey is going to reflect, this is what you want your personal journey to reflect these values. A strong brand identity has attracted has attracted clients and value who really resonate with these same details. So really think about that for yourself. So as you're looking at those next steps, I want you to identify the themes of your brand. How are you going to communicate the themes throughout your marketing? So what colors are you going to use? What fonts are you going to use? What's your logo going to look like? What imagery are you going to use? And you want to make sure that that is consistent through all traffic sources, through everywhere that your brand is represented. Again, kind of looking at like 
I incorporated that from my website, also my course platform the same way. So it's all the way from my course prep platform to all of my traffic sources, which are, again, like your website, your social media accounts and so forth, all the way through in your messaging as well. So kind of like that Amazon or that, what is it, the iPhone, like Apple ID, like when you see the Apple sign, everybody knows what Apple is, right? you want to start to become that brand name and have that brand recognition as well. And that's how you start to, to develop that. Don't think you need to have it all done when you first start, this will grow as you continue to evolve and grow, but you just want to have a, you know, a good, a good start. And this is also something that I give my students and call to serve is all of the, the different templates that you can create the graphics and so forth. So you can start to brand yourself as well as the copy templates to help, you know, exactly what to say. You just kind of, tweak it and make it your own. All right, so we are diving into step five. So actually you've st already started making your marketing plan by identifying your target market. You've created your unique solution. Step three, you've gotten, um, you've gotten started with your branding or we've done some of your financial stuff. We started with our branding, but a good marketing plan can be quite complex but there's some basic elements that they all share. So the first P in marketing is going to be looking at pricing. So you have to figure out how much you're gonna be charging for your product and service, product or services. And this is tricky when you're doing it for the first time, but get started by just getting an idea of how much people are already paying for offers like, your, like yours. So, Again, this is where that market research is really, really going to be valuable for you because you want to make sure that you are pricing it competitively, but you also want to make sure that your production and related costs are all covered. Again, hence why it's important to go through and kind of assess what your expenses are going to be when you're getting started in your business because you want to make sure that you're, you're profiting enough to pay your taxes, to cover your expenses, to pay your salary and still make a profit, right? So you want to be able to, you know, you can charge more than the going rate if you offer that extra value and that you can demonstrate that you do that. So not just offering the particular course or coaching program, but looking again at those additional services that you can offer, you know, whether it's, you know, Voxer support or, you know, some personalized strategy calls, you know, your time is the most valuable resource that you have. So that is the premium when it comes to your particular offers, the more one-on-one -on -one or FaceTime they get with you, the more you can really charge for those services. Um, but just remember that you can always adjust your prices later if you're not seeing sales that you want or, you know, offer different pricing options or packaging options. So you just want to kind of, again, go out, look what your competitors are doing, and then be able to kind of reverse engineer what you want to charge for your services and include these services to go along with it to help you get the, the rate of return that you want on that. And then P for promotion. So you've decided how you're going to reach your audience and tell them about your unique product and services. So I want you to identify the places where you, your target market hangs out online and how you're going to get your message across to them. For example, you may want to, you know, if you want to do this business in person, you may want to hold booths um, at trade shows or post informational articles on websites to your audiences that enjoy that. You know, like I said, in my business, when I was newer into the online space, I did a lot of in-person networking and that really helped me to get my name out there and to really start to build some brand awareness of who I was and the services that I offered. So you can think about doing that. And then you can also think about some of the platforms, you know, and really look and see where are your ideal clients hanging out? You know, are they on Facebook? Are they on TikTok? Are they on Instagram? And really, you know, discovering where they're at and then go into start to market to them there. So the competition, studying your competitors, again, follow them online, see what people have to say about them, consume their content and try out their products. So you know, click on those lead magnets when you see them come through, opt into those, um, you know, different offers that they have and see what it is, you know, really try to understand from the, the marketer's hat 
understand their positioning. What key points, pain points, problems, and aspirations are they really, you know, agitating and highlighting? So really kind of understand how they're talking to their clients and then how they're positioning the offer. And then think about like, you know, once you understand what's in their offering, you know, what's their packaging look like? What's their pricing look like? Try to identify what those gaps are of things that you think that is is missing in their offer that you could fill. And again, looking at what the the clients or people that have gone through those programs and services, what their feedback is will help you to understand some of that. And you'll see it as well in your own because you're going to know what helps you, right? And then you want to set some goals and metrics. So set a goal for your marketing and decide what metrics you're going to use for these goals. Goals should be specific. I like to use SMART goals and teach my clients to use SMART goals, which is specific, measurable, attainable, or achievable, um, realistic, and time-bound. So they really should have deadlines on them. And then if you want some more specific training around that, I'll link that down below where I went into this in a lot more detail in the mini series that I just wrapped up in the month of December, which is our time management mastery. We spoke a lot about um, goals and projects that support those goals, as well as deadlines and how to be able to, to map all that out and really create some deadlines and tracking around that. But, you know, no, no none of this matters if people don't know about your coaching business, right? <laughs> So that's where a solid marketing plan comes into play. So when I first started, my initial goal was to gain 10, 10 new clients the first quarter. And having that clear, measurable goal helped to guide my marketing efforts and track my progress. So you want to choose the right channels. And for me to connect with my target audience of aspiring and new coaches, consultants, course creators, those people that were in that nine to five or those corporate execs that were really looking to transition out of that nine to five and build a profitable and sustainable online coaching program. I looked at doing a couple of different things. The first thing I did was um, I started building my email, email list because truthfully, the email list is the only thing that you own, you know, social media platforms, they could close down tomorrow. They could close you down tomorrow close people's accounts get lost or closed all the time. Um, but your email account won't. So I built an email list offering exclusive content and insights. And this allowed for direct personal communication with my audience. And it allowed me the opportunity to provide valuable content right where they were the most receptive. So it's like specifically that particular audience. Facebook was the second one. And this has a Facebook has a very vast user base. And it enabled me to join and create um, Facebook groups specifically catering to coaches, course creators, consultants, and content creators. So I used it to be able to share longer form content and engage in those community discussions. Instagram. Instagram is another one that I use. It's not my primary. My primary is, again, I would say our email and Facebook groups, and then also now YouTube. If you haven't already, I would very much appreciate it if you give a like to this YouTube video if you found it valuable and consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it so more people like you can um, also receive this very, very valuable training and be the first to get notified of additional training coming your way. But um, knowing that as a platform for sharing in-depth content, YouTube has allowed me to um, post comprehensive videos about coaching about personal development, and it has now become really key, a key initiative in establishing my thought leadership and providing valuable, actionable advice. So kind of looking at that for you, um, but knowing that by diversifying my presence across these platforms, I'm able to engage with my audience in different but complementary ways that maximize my reach and my impact. So thinking about that for you, like I wouldn't try to be all the places especially when you're first starting out, because they, they each have their own um, strategy that helps you to be effective on those platforms. And where it's kind of the saying where you water your grass, it's greener. You know, if you're trying to water or build a lot of bridges at the same time, your message is going to get watered down and you're going to start to burn out. So you, you want to really make sure, pick one or two. And then, you know, once you really master that, then you can really repurpose your content into other places as well. 
So the next steps for you then are to go ahead and take a look at that. I want you to work out the rest of your marketing plan and those above areas, thinking about your pricing, your promotion, your competition, what your goals are, your metrics are, and how you're going to start to evaluate those and measure them so you can understand what's working, what's not working, and where you need to course correct. Um, you know, I was talking with a person yesterday that was really asking like, you know, what's the best advice for getting started? And I would say my key advice in getting started is to pick one thing, pick one audience, like one niche, one ideal client, one product, and one plan, right? One strategy and implement that and test it and tweak it and test it and tweak it and rinse and repeat, keep refining these offers. Because what I often see, it happened to me multiple times in the beginning of my business. It happens to a lot of the coaches that I start working with. They've had the same experience is that they, you keep jumping strategies, right? You try something and you're, you constantly see all of these ads. We're bombarded with these ads every single day, these get rich quick schemes and you know, 10K in, in 30 days. And, you know, I've been wanting to promote that too. It is language that my ideal client likes, but I want to say that growing a strong foundation for your business, building a sustainable business that lasts the course of time really takes time. It takes effort. It takes practice. It takes really understanding what's working and what's not working and going back and refining and getting better and better and really developing these muscles that's how business becomes easy, right? Because you you then start to build in habits and systems and have sustainability and, and dependability in your business when you really develop your systems that work for you and that are resonating for your clients and helping your clients get really good results. So look at that for you, complete your marketing plan, pick that one or two traffic sources, those social media platforms. Again, I would say the email should be your number one and then pick another one, whether it's going to be Facebook, Facebook groups. Again, it's one of the number one social media platforms out there to really help you get started. It doesn't take all the creative burden that I would say like Instagram or YouTube would even take as well. There's a lot more that goes into creating YouTube videos. Facebook, you can really create, you know, longer form content really get into good communication and conversations and Facebook groups because they're more intimate and closed groups where your ideal client is more likely to open up and share with you. Um, pick that and then, or, you know, Instagram, if that's for you, and then really get started and create these strategies. And again, if you need support with these, I'd be happy to help you inside Call to Serve, which is my 90-day um, signature coaching program that helps walk you through all of these steps to get you started. So if this is something that you really want to learn more about, um, go ahead and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Did you find this content helpful? You know, if you did find it helpful, I'd love to know what you, what you heard today or learned today that you found useful. I'm also offering Call to Serve is open for enrollment. I've gone through and re-recorded and recreated. I'm speaking, taking action on what I'm saying and, and creating new content for my clients and, and um, alumni clients that are in the program. So they always have the most cutting edge information at their fingertips to help you continue to build, grow and scale your online coaching business. You're going to learn how to clarify your vision. You're going to learn how to create a profit or pick, find that profitable niche to design high value product that your customer is going to love. You're going to learn how to understand the business basics. It's going to help you get from just starting your business to launching your business, and then to understand what happened through that launch and then how to perfect your business, onboard your clients, all of the things. Each module has action steps. So you'll be able to take prog to to take action and make progress as you're going along. So you know that you are getting results every single step of the way as you are on your course creation journey. So if this is you and you would really like to learn how to turn your business into a, your business idea into a real viable business, I want you to go ahead and head over. I will li um, list all the links down below for you to go ahead and, and check out that program. 
Also, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel. Again, you would be the first to know when more videos drop each week to help you along your course creation journey, as well as it also helps my content reach other coaches, course creators, and service providers like you so they can also get the support that they need in their business. And remember to grab your goodies that I have linked in the description box below. You have, again, your, let's pop it up here on the stage here, you have your your um, exclusive access guide that goes in detail and much more detail that I could cover in this one video here for you today that teaches you in depth the five steps that we've gone through, the key steps that are the foundational pieces to really building your business. I'd also like to invite you to join my free Facebook group, The Course Creator Collective. It's an incredible community of like-minded entrepreneurs that are ambitious, coaches, course creators, consultants like you that are in various stages of business. And then you can really connect with, collaborate with, and just help us all grow together. So thank you so much for your time and attention. And I really look forward to hearing from you again. Um, let me know how I can serve you, what other course topics or video topics you would like to get some more training on. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.